welcome to the second part and this part we're gonna focus on the roles of R&D in NIC. So um, NIC means newly industrializing country or also be known as um, follower nation. Yeah. So R&D is not a homogeneous well-specified term um, as what we have learned earlier because R&D actually covers a wide range of activities which involve a large of number of interrelated capabilities. These capabilities need to be appreciated, needs to be developed, integrated into firms if they are succeed through innovation. So R&D is actually, what R&D is actually is dependent on where is the activity being done. For example, um, if R&D in India is different than R&D in USA, and also when R&D, when is the R&D activities is done. If it's in Korea during the 70s, it's different than what's happening of R&D in Korea during the 90s. And also who, what um, the, the type, I mean who, who um, the company who did the R&D, and also why, because R&D as a business or for a technical change. So earlier in the lecture, we actually learned that um, there is a simple understanding of what R&D is, R&D is, but in newly industrializing countries, R&D has different roles. So I'm going to go through all these roles. Um, first is R&D as indigenization, B, R&D as learning from other firms, C, R&D as improving existing products, D, R&D as the business, E, R&D as the research, F, R&D as coordinator or integrator of knowledge. So um, we're going to go through one by one. Firstly, R&D as indigenization. So almost all NICs went through an import substitution phase to export promotion phase. The East, Con East Asian countries like Japan and Korea moved to export promotion much earlier than Latin America, Africa or India. So what happened in the indigenization R&D? Um, so basically, um, the content, they basically substituting imported materials and component by producing them locally. So in the content of R&D industry, um, you need um, materials and components and most of them are unable, are unavailable locally. So therefore, um, for indigen indigenization, um, the content of R and D in the, in the industry become development the development of local materials and components um, to substitute the items that were unavailable and also to the, and also and and also the development of local manufacturing process. So the objective of this R and D is not to make a product, but is actually to make a product almost entire locally. Um, it also aimed to indigenize the next product, not to improve the existing one or manufacturing vector, but to make it locally again. Um, an example of R&D as indigenization is the case of hydraulic excavators in 1980s. So this is hydraulic excavators. Um, Korean firms like Hyundai, Samsung and Daewoo, Hyundai or Hyundai, I don't know. Um, so you can see that that excavator um, has a Samsung brand on it. Um, they start they when they first involve or venture in this um, R and D, they started out as a licensees from France and Japan. So they made an agreement basically from uh, companies uh, from France or Japan. Um, uh, so they made an agreement to get a license to produce um, this hydraulic excavators. But by 1983, Samsung sold 633 hydraulic excavators, approaching, um, so this number is actually similar to the size of the smallest among the 20 largest global producers. So basically, um, their production is similar to the global producers. So although um, Samsung declare that R and D is not is a non profit area, indicating that the relative unimportance of R and D for profit making at that time. Samsung nonetheless um, nurse ambitions to development its own design capability. So the eventual target um, of their R and D and design efforts is to develop their own ability to produce their own machine, which can suit to the Korean market as well as as well as overseas requirements. Um, apart from that, 
um, a supplementary Korean trade policy also helps this R&D activity as to expose domestic production to the international competition and force them to develop their own design, decrease their cost, cost to international level, improve the quality of the products and to penetrate export markets. So there are numbers of other examples of this indigenization, but I'm giving you just one example. Um, so now, second one is R&D as learning from other firms. So East Asia successful industrial development is due to their openness to foreign land knowledge and ability and willing, willingness to tap international technology markets. Um, the process of technology, um, an example, the process of technology acquisition is uh, occurred in Korea. Um, you know, if you know company LG, the one that um, produce um, television and a mobile phone, LG with Hitachi and Hyundai with Ford. So that one is for television and Hyundai is for car. So we're going to look at the LG uh, examples on how they do R&D by learning from other ones. So um, Hitachi, ah, no, not Hitachi. LG had a licensing agreement with Hitachi, Japan. So Japan um, actually started this R&D much more earlier than Korea. So that's why they are more advanced. Um, so the agreement actually included assembly processes, product specification, production, know-how, parts, components, training and technical expert, transferring significant vo volume of explicit and tacit knowledge. So what happened was um, LG sent their experienced engineers to Hitachi and these engineers assimilating and mastering TV production. Um, they have daily discussion, group discussion every evening, and they review and share their literature, their observation, their training, and facilitating rapid learning by the team. So by the time they got back to Korea, they play a crucial role um, to, you know, to jumpstart the R&D um, in the production of television um, in Korea. So, um, this also a similar case to the Hyundai and Ford, but we just um, but the case I'm giving you here is just LG. Next is LG as improving existing product. So, um, in newly industrializing countries, a major role of R and D has long been seen as adapting foreign technology to local condition. So the scale of production may be lower or the skill levels may be different. I'm giving an example of the case of Hindustan Liver Limited, HLL. Um, this is one of the most respected, respected names in corporate India. It has long dominated Indian soaps and detergents market with household name brands. So what they did was they made a shampoo more income friendly by packaging it instead of from one little bottle I have one this is one little bottles of shampoo and they package it into three, 30 gram plastic sachet i also have it here huh um made it affordable to those with just a few rupees in their pocket so within three years um of the introduction of the sachet volume sales of shampoo more than double so they improve existing product um, instead of one liter the 30 gram plastic sachet, hence their production, I mean, their, their profit increased. Next, R&D as the business. R&D can constitute the business of a, of a firm in three different circumstances. Um, through transnational re relocation, relocation of R&D facilities, contract research, research lab partnership with local university. I'm giving an example of Astra AB. Um, this is an old I think now it's called AstraZeneca. Um, this is the largest pharmaceutical company in Scandinavian, um, Scandinavian um, where they established their research center in India. So why they do this is so that they can use the local skills and expert and also to address the shortages of R&D personnel in the field of biotechnology in Sweden. So in these centers of research in India, they do biomedical research of on infectious diseases and develop novel diagnostic therapeutics and therapy. Next, R&D as research. 
So in technology leaders like country like US of the, or the European country, research means expand the base of knowledge on which existing industries depend and generates new knowledge that leads to the new technologies and the birth of new industries. Whereas in the technology followers like the um, newly industrializing countries, um, for example, India, Malaysia, Korea, um, the role of research is even more limited. By definition, um, these technology followers are not really advancing frontiers in science-based industry. Also, they are not in, innovate. They are not really innovating new technological techno, technical paradigms in the province of the technology followers. But they do research, which is quite limited due to various factors such as the cost. Um, for example, the R&D spending of the 20th largest international pharmaceutical firm exceeded the combined spending of the 20 largest Indian firms by a factor of seven. So yeah, there is the inequality of the um, capital investment um, between the leader, technology leaders and the technology followers. So firms in NIC set up research collaboration with publicly funded institutes and universities. And finally, R&D as coordinator and integ or integrator of knowledge. Um, this is not a very common R&D in NICs, but this basically means that R&D can be co the coordination and integration of a global knowledge system. The key role is to coordinate research done outside the firm and connect them um, up with in-house effort. So that's all for this section. Um, part of you in the next part.